and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Well, on our show today, we're going to talk a little about pre-emerge options when it comes to herbicides for conventional corn. It's a little bit different than in front of Roundup corn like we talked about last week, so you want to stay tuned for that. Well, we focus so much about corn and planting. We want to get the right population and have the seed placed just perfectly. But what about soybeans? Nobody ever talks about soybeans. All I ever hear is, oh, they're pretty forgiving. And you know what? We haven't found that to be the case. We're going to talk about soybean planting and seed singulation and so forth on today's show. Coming up later in the show today, we've got a Weed of the Week and an Iron Talk as well. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgrow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. Here at Ag PhD, we get a lot of questions about what are biological products, so we wanted to talk about that during our Farm Basics time today. Well, when you think about the biology involved in agriculture, it's tremendous. In fact, it's really, really fun. We look at soils, for example, as a living thing. There are so many living things in soil, like bacteria and fungi, and many species of bacteria and fungi are actually working with our plants in a symbiotic relationship to help bring nutrients in or access more water, whatever the case may be, it's awesome. So we wanna talk about some of those things because as we find strains that are beneficial to our crop, we like to use some of those strains right around our seed. Yeah, it's just that when we say the word biological, sounds a little scary to me. What I prefer is saying natural products. So in other words, things that already exist in our environment, soil biology or microbes that already exist somewhere in somebody's field, maybe even in your own field, and we just amp up the numbers of those to be more beneficial to the crop. So a great example here, as we're seeding crop in the spring, we like to put biology either in the furrow or actually in a seed treatment so it's in close proximity to the plants. Now, as those plants start to grow and you start to see root systems come out and root hairs develop, these natural products that we put right around the seed will colonize first. And oftentimes it's a first come, first serve environment where plants are actually putting out carbohydrates or sugars into the soil and this biology that we're placing close to it is going to be the ones that benefit from it. And then they'll give back to the plants in a symbiotic relationship. I'll give you some very specific examples here. Inoculant for soybeans. That's live bacteria that colonizes on soybean roots, takes atmospheric nitrogen, converts it into a form that the plant can use. That's been around for decades. We've also had quick roots. We've used a lot on our farm. We've talked about it here on the show. It's beneficial bacteria and fungi. We've used products like NutriCycle and Heat Shield. There are many different biological, or as I would call them, natural products that are now getting used in agriculture today. So people that say, well, we don't want you to use all this chemistry. Okay, well, here's what we're now going to do is use some of the things that already exist in our environment, these biological or natural products. We're using them on seed, near seed, just in our fields and getting good benefits. Well, one thing so far that we aren't getting out of these natural products is control of our weed of the week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump. Providing the ultimate protection, this wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now, all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, Agro Liquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. Agro Liquid moves you closer to your target. 
Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm, because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. I think about what kind of farm I'm going to hand over to her. About how I can make it more successful, more sustainable. I talk to other farmers, with agronomists and advisors to help me make better decisions. To figure out what's working for them and how to make it work even better for my farm. Because when you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express End Cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. When it comes to corn, you and I both know that if we can plant the corn seeds evenly down the row, and if they all emerge at the exact same time, we've got a better chance for high yield. Well, is that true in soybeans? Well, all you have to do is go out in a soybean field and you can see this is a bigger deal than anybody is talking about. When you look at emergence on soybeans, when our planting depths all over the board, it's not even close to even and the plants never have an even chance to compete. I think back to the time when we used to drill soybeans that my dad would say, yeah, you're gonna see some beans on top of the ground, some are gonna be a little deeper and some are gonna be just right at around an inch deep. Well, they were all over the board and we had emergence spread out over weeks. You don't want that in your field with any crop that you're growing. Unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of studies showing us that, you know what, if I plant my seeds evenly spaced in the field and I get very even emergence with soybeans, that it's that big a deal for yield. But what we would encourage you to do is just go start marking some plants in your field, watch where emergence is, and then track those plants all through the season and see which plants produce the most. Also, I, I would suggest taking a look at your planting population. Now, a lot of people are talking about some lower planting populations, but we still have a lot of people running higher planting populations. There are reasons why you would consider doing both. With the lower planting populations, you get more air movement through there, which means you're probably a little bit less likely to have disease. But with the higher populations, now you've got a better chance to not only get great weed control, but also we find we have less iron deficiency chlorosis when we have the higher planting populations. One other problem that higher populations can help with, Brian, is when you have soil crusting over. You just can't get enough push if you just have one plant and you have a hard crust on top. But if you have several plants close by, they can all push together and we often see better emergence and better stands even when we have some crusting issues if we have higher populations. Yeah, so in terms of planting population, we still say across the board, we're looking at 130,000 to 140,000 planting population, but there are cases we might go higher and cases we might go lower. And again, that's planting population. Don't forget with soybeans, the standard in the industry is much less than it is with corn. It's so hard to keep germination, is where I'm going with this, keep germination good with soybeans, that the standard is 90% germination, whereas the standard for corn is typically 95%. So what I'm saying is, even if you had what we would all consider great soybeans, only 90% of them are gonna grow. That means if you planted 140,000, that's a final stand of 126,000, okay? Or 130,000, you know, boy, you're starting to get down there at 117,000. So all I'm trying to say here is, 
take a look at what you're actually planting for plants per acre, yes, but do a final stand count too, and you'll find that in a lot of cases out in fields, we're only getting final stands today of 100, 110,000. So when you hear some of the people talking about lower planting populations, be real careful of that, because if you start seeding 100,000 plants per acre, in some cases you might only have 70 or 80,000 plants there, and then we're almost to where most insurance companies would say it's a replant situation. One other thing we'd like you to try when it comes to planting soybeans this year is try singulating seed. When we look at a lot of the ways that soybeans are seeded across the country, we see two beans dropping at the same time or even three beans dropping at the same time. And what we're hearing from some of the highest yielding farmers around, uh, whether it's in our neighborhood or other parts of the country, they're saying singulation is making a big difference for them. So it may be something to look at on your farm this year as well. Another thing we always encourage you to look for on your farm is weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target at Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. Next, we're going to talk about pre emerged herbicides for conventional corn. Now, you may just say, well, wait a second, if I can use it on conventional, I can really use it on any kind of corn I got. Yeah, you can. You can use it on Roundup Ready corn or Liberty Link corn or stacked corn. Sure, no problem. But with conventional corn, there is one thing that you can't do, and that's do a rescue grass treatment with Roundup. So we've got to change up a little bit what we're doing with our pre's. Back 20, 25 years ago, before we saw all the BTs come in and Roundup corn, Liberty corn, all those things, we had corn and we didn't have to call it conventional corn. We just called it corn. So that's when I was a young agronomist, and all I can tell you is this. Back in those days, because that's in effect what we're going back to if you're going to raise conventional corn. Anyway, back in those days, what I would always talk to farmers about is grass control, grass control, grass control. You got to remember that corn is a grass, so it is very difficult. It's challenging to get that grass out of the grass crop. There aren't a lot of products that are very selective. 
really the only chemical family we use that's what I would consider excellent on grass pre-emerge is the group 15s. And the reason why you want to use a great pre-emerge herbicide is because post-emerge, all we really have is accent. And you can tell me all day long, oh, I'll use an HPPD like Impact or Laudus or something like that. Well, look, sure, if the grass is a half inch tall and it's scattered through the field, yeah, we can probably kill some of that. But if you have a bunch of grass, you're gonna get your yield hurt real bad, number one. And number two, are you even going to get all that grass under control? So you've got to start with a great pre. It's going to be a group 15 that we would always recommend. That includes Outlook, Surpass, Harness, Zidua, and Dual. Here's the caution though, Brian, with the group 15s, we're kind of used to using half rates or really low rates because where do we use these products? Well, we use them post-emerge in soybeans. We use them at cut rates along with a broadleaf killer in front of Roundup Ready corn. Now we're talking about using full rates. So it's something where you need to look at what's the full labeled rate for your soil type and your geography. That's where I would recommend starting with these group 15s. Now you may say, oh, I don't know if I want to go two and a half pints or, or whatever the full rate is of the product you're choosing. Try it out on your farm. And if you say, well, I only want to use two pints. No, try the two and a half. And if you do think you want to experiment with lower rates, that's fine, but do it on very small acres. Because like Brian mentioned, if you run into grass escapes, it's going to kill you on yield. Now, one of the things that we always had being from the Western Corn Belt where we farm is you'd end up with a dry spring from time to time. And we'd run into farmers that would say, look, I want to plant my corn, then I'm going to go spray my group 15. You can certainly do that. But the problem is you not only have to get rain to get the product into the soil, you have to get rain and enough of it to get it into the soil and into the weed before that weed comes out of the ground. Sure, all of these products have a tiny amount of rescue. In other words, they have a little bit of reach back if the grass gets up a half inch or something like that. With a big rain, you can probably get enough herbicide in to take that down. I've seen it before, even on our own farm but I'm not counting on that. So here's what I'm saying. If you want to make sure that the product works, I would suggest light incorporation. Just very light. A lot of times I'll tell guys, use a field cultivator at eight miles an hour or something so you can't bury it, and then you'll have pretty good control. Remember that all these group 15s are shoot inhibitors. You, you don't want them down where the roots are at. You want them up where the shoot is at. That's usually within the top half inch of soil. The other strategy that gets used quite often is just to spray them a little bit earlier in the spring. That way you have more time to catch some moisture on them and incorporate them into the soil. We see a lot of the no-till guys doing that because frankly it does not work to wait until after you plant and then go out and spray because too often we don't get a rain and then the grasses start coming and you're just too late. All right, let's say that in your Roundup corn, you've been using something like Sure Starter Triple Flex. Maybe you've been using Verdict. It's one of these herbicides that it's got quite a bit of broadleaf activity, but it's a cut rate of that group 15. You can still use those in conventional corn, but if you do spike in more of the group 15 to get yourself up to the full labeled rate of the group 15. Because what I'm trying to tell you is, like in Verdict, it's got Sharpen in there. Well, Sharpen has no grass control, and it's just got a cut rate. This, this Verdict has just has a cut rate of outlook. Look, same thing in Sure Start and Triple Flex. You don't see the, the broadleaf killers giving you a lot of grass control and you got a cut rate of a group 15. Make sure you're bumping that group 15 up so you've got the absolute full rate that's going to give you the best control on grass. That's our number one concern for you if you're in conventional corn. The other thing is if you're using one of these products with an HPPD in it pre-emerge, you're taking away a great mode of action post-emerge because you can only use those HPPDs once. And if you increase the rate of those pre-emerge HPPDs, HPPD combo products that also have a group 15. If you just say, well, I'm just going to raise the rate on my HPPD pre, now you're going to have such a high rate of the HPPD that you're very likely to have some carryover issues for next year. Yep, well, once again, what we're concerned about in conventional corn is grass because your only real rescue option post emerge is accent. That's expensive and not that great either in terms of weed control. So use a full rate of a group 15 if you're raising conventional corn this year. The other thing I'm concerned about, Brian, is weed identification of these grasses. We've got one such grass that you'll have to identify to solve our Weed of the Week issue today. We'll show you how to stop this weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System.
weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Grass identification is really fun. If you're saying, oh no, the weeds are grass, and I'm gonna have a tough time identifying that and telling it apart from other weeds. Well, this is wild proso millet, and there are a few ways that you can tell this apart from other grasses. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna look at here, first of all, it's an annual weed, not a perennial. So it's not gonna have some enormously huge root system with rhizomes, it's just an annual weed. The other thing is, think about it, in the name, wild proso millet. Well, what do we know about proso millet? It's a pretty big seed. So if you compare that to a foxtail seed, and yes, with all grass weeds, the seed is going to remain attached to the plant for the life of that plant. So you can simply dig up the plant, look at the seed, and if you see a great big seed, it's definitely not going to be foxtail. Well, and the other thing too is you can look at the seed head as the plant gets big. Of course, you're looking at it across the fence in your neighbor's field because you'd never let a weed go to seed on your farm, would you? Well, anyway, if it does happen to go to seed, we're going to talk about control now. All right, in terms of control, we were just discussing group 15s. Group 15s are not that great on wild proso millet. That's really kind of the challenge. They are great on foxtail. So that's one of the things, if you see a bunch of grass out in your field, and you used a full rate of a group 15, the odds are slim it's foxtail. Could happen, but odds are slim, and that's where it might be wild proso. The other thing is, if you're going away from Roundup Ready corn, and you've got a problem grass like this, I would reconsider the decision because it's going to be tough to kill some of these yep. other species of grass, uh, like wild proso, field sand burr, woolly cup grass, if you don't have Roundup to clean them up. Yep, or Liberty. Either way, we've got something different than just the standard accent. Will accent kill wild proso? Sure it will, but the wild proso has got to be really small. You've got to have good weather, good application methods, all that type of thing. It's hard to get wild proso under control post-emerge. Now, the one thing that we're one chemical family that we've left out so far is the HPPD family. If you were to, let's say, throw a group 15 together with some Balance Flex pre-emerge, that's gonna help you a little more. You could also use an HPPD post-emerge to get some help on this particular weed, but it's not the greatest. All right, let's turn to soybeans. If you use the three pre-program, you're gonna have pretty good success. Getting one of those yellows in the mix uh, and then throwing the other products in to give a little additional help is awesome. Post-emerge the volunteer corn killers, if you use them at a little higher rate, you can do a great job on wild proso millet too. Yep, when we turn to wheat, that's where we'd probably suggest going prepare, pre-emerge, and then post-emerge, we're looking at something like axial. Usually wild proso isn't a big problem in small grains, so we're not too terribly concerned about it. Just get a great crop canopy and that'll choke it out a little bit too. That's all the time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. In 1949, Morton Buildings constructed our first machine storage building to establish our bond with the farming community. Since then, our relationship has grown, and so have our product offerings. From the smallest specialized operation to the largest agricultural enterprise, we understand the needs of your business and continue to evolve to meet industry demands. Plus, when you build a Morton Building, you're backed by the strongest warranty in the business. To learn more about the Morton Advantage, visit mortonbuildings.com. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. 
That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. There's so many things to know on the farm. One of the basics to add to your equipment knowledge is being able to read and understand the numbers on your tractor tires. We get questions about this every year and farmers that say, hey, can you talk about the tires one more time and the numbers and what they mean? Well, today is your day, and that's the topic of this Iron Talk. First of all, let's say you're looking at a tire with a 420-85 R38. The 420 stands for the millimeters of width of that tire. If millimeters don't mean much to you, simply divide that number by 25.4 to get the number of inches that tire is wide. In this case, 420 millimeters is about 16 and a half inches. The second number, 85, is the aspect ratio. In other words, this represents the sidewall of the tire. 85 means the sidewall is equal to 85% of the width of the tire. The R stands for radial. That's probably the easiest thing on the tire to, to understand, even if you don't know what the other numbers mean. But instead of that R, if you've got a B or you have a dash, that would indicate you have a bias ply tire. Finally, that last number, the 38, indicates the rim diameter of the tire in inches. So we have a 420-85 R38 tire. And if you know all of that, you're definitely at the head of the class. So here's some more details that you'll want to understand as well. How do tubeless tires work without a tube? Well, the tube in this case is actually built into the inner liner of the tire. Another very important thing to understand is a standard load index rating of your tire. If you look at this one, it says 144A8 and 141B. Well, the 144A8 means it's designated to carry a load signified by that 144, which translates to a specific number of pounds or kilograms. In this case, it's 6,150 pounds per tire. The A8 means you could carry that load at 25 miles per hour. And the 141B means you can only carry a weight of 5,680 pounds per tire if you're going to run at 30 miles an hour. Now, there's a lot of information on the side of your tires. Take some time this spring to look at and understand the information on them because every number and letter does have meaning. It'll help you pick the right tires for your operation and avoid problems. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. That's all the time we've got for today's show, but if you're looking for more agronomic information, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD Insider magazine. You can go to agphdinsider.com. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.